we got set up here and we were intending to do a video interview, but the airfans opened up and it shut down. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> say excuse my uh, uh, vernacular. And of course, you gave me a quick shower. Yeah, and then of course I, I attempted to empty the awning of water, and Ian got a free shower. So. <laughs> We'll just sort ourselves out and uh, maybe we'll have a bit of information about the travels of my good friends, Ed uh, and Ian. <laughs> Right, so I'm sat here at the uh, Fish and Anchor campground near Evesham in the UK. I've come here uh, as a sort of halfway uh, meeting point to meet up with some good friends of mine who I've known on Facebook for a while but never actually met, which is Edda and Ian, who are not absolutely full-time van dwellers like me, but they do get out in their van a hell of a lot. Uh, so uh, I'll just... Uh, hand you over and perhaps we can hear something about how they came about van life. I do happen to know that uh, Edda converted the van herself so I'll hand over now to Edda and Ian. Um, yes, we were on holiday and we were saying wouldn't it be nice to have a van? That was in August and in September we bought a 16-seater minibus that 16-seater minibus had 13 seats too many and a heck of a lot of other superstructure and things that they were sitting on. So that got all ejected and I then took the van to the Weybridge and it was substantially lighter, which made life a lot easier. Um, we then thought about what do we need to put in it and that was the whole reason for actually going the self-build route because we needed to get Ian's mobility scooter on board, we needed to get his walking frame on board, we needed to have an alternative to one mobility scooter in case that clapped out. So there was a lot of stuff that we needed to put in even before we thought about gas bottles and leisure batteries and all the rest of it. So that's why we went self-built and we raised the bed and really everything has got room under the bed and it's been the ideal answer for us really. Well this is something that a lot of my friends have done. Uh, uh, so I, I live full time in mine, mostly full time and a lot of people have done this. I mean I've got a commercial motor and there's a reason for that because you know uh, uh, my wife was very ill and we needed something very quick but that is the great thing because everybody's requirements are, are special. Now, I happen to know that, you know, you've been on some pretty uh, epic trips yourself, although you're not full time. Uh, so um, we'll perhaps get a look at inside your motorhome when the light's a bit better and I'll put the photos in. Uh, so I won't embarrass you into a mud tidy up just now. <laughs> <laughs> but we're just sitting here enjoying a nice cold... Uh, I, oh, I forgot to mention, Edda is German. Um, so I, my late wife was German as well, and I speak German fluently. Luckily, we're, we're not going to do this interview in German. Aber warum nicht? Yeah, yeah, we couldn't have so. We could have yeah, we must have done untertitel for all other than Einfugen. But yeah, no, we won't do it. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, perhaps you could uh, tell me about your first ever trip for then, a, you know, out in the van. And I know that your uh, most epic trip uh, involved leaving Europe. So uh, perhaps you could just give a quick one down of that. Um, yes, I mean, after we converted it, we wanted to make just a quick little trip. So we're not too far away in case things totally turned pear-shaped on us. 
So we went round Wales and I think pretty quickly we realised that we do need a toilet. It became an utter nightmare without a toilet. <laughs> we thought that there were lots of public toilets and there are but never no. when you need one. I think Ian would concur, men of our age, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you, even if you don't need the toilet, you still need it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Even if we used it when we saw one rather than we needed one, no. Going without a toilet became a big no-no. You can flannel wash, mm. but no. So that became an instant modification. So now I've got my stool stool. Um, but other than that, everything really worked quite well and as we had intended and we had a great time and Wales was lovely. This was of course before Corona, this was November 17, mm. so wild camping was still perfectly possible and yeah. welcome and nobody gave you any grief anywhere. I love Wales as well, I've been to Wales quite a lot, mm. Yeah, it's, it's a great place. So yeah, so that was the trial, and then um, after minor modifications in January coming here, we set off on our first trip, and we went to France, Spain, and yeah, France and Spain, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Long, a longer trip around Spain, going crisscross on the on the Spanish Peninsula into Portugal as well. And and of we course, had a great time. There's no comparison to Britain is there, to the uh, facilities. Why anyone would want to go motor homing in Britain, I do ask myself. Well, <laughs> I tend to park up on pubs as uh, as you do. Well, which, yes, yeah. but it's still you know no facilities yeah. here. People are always bitching about vans, you get looked at like you're gypsies, not that that's necessarily mm. a bad thing, but no, on the continent you've got, for starters, better weather. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, as we Germans say, uh, we Germans, I'm British, but I've got a German name called Lustig ist das Zigeunerleben. <laughs> well, I'm not going to yodel, don't Absolutely. worry. <laughs> And then the, the, in the summer we went round um, Germany, Poland, Sweden, Denmark and that was the summer, the epic summer of two, yeah, 2018 when all of northern Germany basked in the sunshine. Mm -hmm. We called up a Danish friend and said, Peter, where are you? He said, I'm in the south of France. Yeah. I said, come home, come home. It's lovely. So yeah, no, we, we had a fantastic time. The the Baltic coast was like the Mediterranean. The, we got stuck mm. on the sands of the island of Roma. We're digging around, uh, trying to get out. And um, it is now shipping it down again. Oh dear, but it doesn't matter does it, we've got our morning up and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, of course it doesn't matter because it was Ian that got drenched well, by Alan uh, and not me. Well earlier I said look all, all the water's in the awning and I, I pushed the awning up and poor Ian got it all down his neck. Uh, like, like the ice cubes when you go out in yeah. the Arctic Circle, <laughs> it? yeah, so yeah, uh, uh, yeah. But, I've um, blotted my copybook with Ian, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had an amazing time and um, the Baltic was literally like the Mediterranean, which is where we weren't, mm -hmm. at least not at that point. And uh, yeah, we had a fun So, time. let's get to then to the epic thing. You have not confined yourself to Europe, you've been outside of Europe. So, where did you go outside of Europe then? And uh, uh, I've not been to where you've been to and I, I was a bit reluctant to go because I was worried so but you will disagree with me I'm sure. We, the, this was in summer 18 and then we went a bit round other places in the autumn of 18 but January 19 we again took the ferry across and turned right. Where to? 
well, we carried on going right, and we went through France. And but then, we haven't told the viewers where you we went, went to. We went through <laughs> Spain, and we ended up in Tarifa. And in Tarifa, they had these wonderful little tickets that got you onto a ferry to Morocco. Aha. The year before, we did a day trip on that very same ferry to just see what it was actually like how people were or were not helpful to, to people with disabilities and all the rest of it to just check it check it out and we were delightfully surprised when we went on the day trip how kind and helpful everybody was without holding a hand open afterwards uh, so we thought yep yeah, okay we'll we'll do it this year and so we went across we bought in Tangier in the harbour a month's worth of insurance so yeah we had a wonderful time we went along the coast until Essaouira then we headed inland and over the Tisnit Test Pass which was different but nowhere and near us Atlas Mountains yes. wow. It sounds it. My, my son's a bit of a, um, a, a student of Arabic culture and stuff, and he, he's urging me to go. But, but then again, you're a couple. I'm not sure whether I'd be brave enough to go on my own. I but. have seen a few women on their own. Really? Again, mm. women of a certain age rather oh, than well. whippersnappers. Well, I, I like women of a certain age, but <laughs> then so, I'm of a certain age as well. <laughs> and so do the Moroccans, because they venerate older ah, people. Okay. So um, older women in Morocco don't have any grief. They don't get, um, hello darling. Yeah. So yeah, no, as long as you're reasonably modestly dressed. I mean, when you're in Rome, do as the Romans yeah, do. Of course. If you're running around in a t-shirt in a, in, a, in a, you know, bikini in the town square, well, don't, ex don't be surprised if you get molested. <laughs> yeah, you know? they'll look at you strange, Alan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, well it, it could be something. I certainly have noticed with the changeable weather this year in, in Britain, uh, my poor old bones are aching like crazy every time the weather changes. So uh, maybe a session in the dry, hot heat would be something. Mm. I mean, I fortified the van before we went to Morocco, before we even left, because we were thinking of going. And I put locks everywhere, with, yeah. and I put, and I got a steering wheel lock, and I got a wheel clamp, you name it. Mm. And in the end, all these precautions are far more useful for when it's parked up at home in front of our house than in Morocco. Likewise, I, I, I must admit, all my locks are mainly for the UK. <laughs> it's a pity, yeah. but you know, just to wind up, uh, I, I've been on by travels as well like yourself and I find you show, show you a degree often people who have the least are the people who will give you the most absolutely absolutely mm. I mean the big towns of course are always a mm. different issue altogether you can't compare any big town to the normal people for want of a better way of mm -hmm. calling it but we were in uh, I can't remember where the place was it had an enormous waterfall and I, I went there and by the time I got back it, I was knackered and I thought the thought of walking uphill all the way back to the van no so I thought for that short distance I'll just grab a taxi and I yeah. got in and I paid and I got out and suddenly this taxi was chasing me and I thought Bleh. it was chasing me to give me back my mobile phone oh, right. which yeah. slipped out yeah. of my Absolute. pocket yeah. Well, it's refreshing. It makes you believe in humanity. And we won't talk about politics on this channel, but uh, we, we have talked privately about politics and there are certain things that we could get very excited about. <laughs> we, we, we won't mention them. You're getting wet again. Oh dear, Ian's getting water off the... Uh, you uh, are getting wet well, this is Another t-shirt, please. Yeah. That t -shirt well, this is a Well, this is a good point to just draw a close. Uh, I'll just ask you the last question what what's going to be your next trip <laughs> oh who knows, who across, knows? across the channel and turn uh, somewhere where corona lets you yeah. yes well we'd like to go to uh, um, 
Baltic, uh, not the Baltic, the old Balkans. The Balkans, yeah. Yes. Down, yeah. Down well, the Croatia, I've heard down this very good. Adriatic, yeah. Croatia, um, Serbia, Croatia. Yeah. Bulgaria, Albania, into Greece. Well, I, I may time. be short behind you. You never know. So, yeah. So, thank you very much, Edda, Ian, and uh, um, as I say, this is a wonderful life. And if you've just sort of come across this channel, um, I meet so many people in all sorts of different vans and rigs. You make can make this life how you want it, and it is freedom and it's happiness at the end of and the day. And it still is. Never mind and the naysayers. Look at Edwin and Ian, they're smiling and I'm smiling as well. <laughs> Even so, with a wet t-shirt yeah. competition. Yeah. <laughs> Even with the rain pouring down, we yeah. don't care. <laughs> so, bye folks and thanks again Ian uh, and Edna. Cheers. Oh, Just the right. got it back at the neck again. Huh? Good morning, good morning, allerseit. Good morning, Alan. Good to schlafen. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, I done. Did you sleep well? Yeah. Your bed is still. <laughs> right, so uh, we had a, a merry evening, I think, uh, yesterday. And yeah. uh, we're just going to bid farewell. But I thought perhaps we'd have a quick look at uh, Edwin and Ian's van, which uh, they've uh, equipped themselves. Uh, can you just give me a, a quick one down, Edda? Um, yes, yeah, so we've got a turning front double seat, a box in the front for all sorts of munchies. The uh, bench doubles up as a wardrobe. Then we have got a full fridge freezer, full cooker with grill and oven and everything I cannot oh, do without. I haven't got an oven, I've only got the gas hob, that's uh, how envious. Yep, yeah. um, hot water, heating. These jars are ingenious. But, uh, my oh. dad did that in his shed for screws and nuts yeah. and washers and things like that. I before. have seen it done before, but that's quite yeah. a collection you've got there, yeah. So yes. did my dad, actually. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, and a, a very nice mattress under the, on the bed. That looks super comfortable. It, the table pulls out from under the from bed. From underneath, yeah. So yes. you can sit, uh, yeah. And of course, my euphemistically called stool stool. Uh -huh, yeah, <laughs> porta potty. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, we've is... got two forty and twelve volt electricity. Um, we've got the solar panels on the roof. Um, well, basically, it's got all knobs and buttons on. I can't think yeah. anything that's missing if, apart from aircon, which. I must have a closer look at what that Yeah, to yeah, be my uh, my aircon's pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, thank you, Ian and Edda. It's great to meet mm. you after all this time. Yeah. And bon voyage. Thank you, Alan.